This video will demonstrate the Serials module in Sitka's Evergreen. The Serials module is used to create subscriptions and prediction patterns so you can generate predicted issuances and quickly receive issues as they come into the library. While there is some work involved in setting up subscriptions, it is very easy to quickly receive issues as they arrive. We will start by looking at a catalog record which has a subscription and issues attached. Serial subscriptions are attached to bibliographic records in the catalog. Received issues will display as items on the bib record. When a subscription is added to a bib record, you will see an issues held area at the bottom of the record summary. Here you can see the system generated holding summary. Serials permissions are required to use the Serials module. If your library is interested in using the Serials module, please contact Sitka Support. Serial copy templates specify the item attributes that should be applied when a serial copy is received. You must create at least one template to receive serials. Please see the Serial Copy Template video for more information. Prediction pattern templates specify the caption and publication information for your subscriptions. You can create prediction pattern templates in the admin module or create patterns when you create the subscription. Prediction patterns can be shared with staff at your library. We will now look at the steps required to create a subscription. Subscriptions are attached to existing bibliographic records in the catalog. So find a bib record for your title if one doesn't exist, you can import one from Z3950 or you can create a brief mark record. From the record summary, click on Serials and select Manage Subscriptions. Click on New Subscription. Enter the subscription information. The Owning Library will default to the the library your workstation is registered to. You can choose a different library in the dropdown. Use a calendar picker to select the start date for your subscription. Enter a subscription end date. This field is optional. You can leave this empty. Enter the expected offset. This is also optional. This is the difference between the nominal publish publishing date of an issue and the date you expect to receive your copy. Distributed at should be the circulation library. If your library receives multiple copies of a subscription, you can add a distribution to add an extra copy. Enter a label for your distribution. This is a free text field that is not publicly visible. You can enter the branch that you are circulating it at or a copy number. The OPAC display dropdown allows you to choose whether the public catalog display of issues should be grouped by chronology or by enumeration. The receiving template specifies the item attributes which should be applied on receipt. You'll choose a template that you created. These are the serial copy templates. The send to dropdown allows you to designate specific users or departments that serial items need to be routed to upon receiving. If you're not doing any routing, you can just click on save. Your new subscription will be displayed in the road data. Now click on the Manage Predictions tab and we'll now create our prediction pattern. You can choose to create a prediction pattern from a template if you've previ previously set up prediction pattern templates. We're going to create a new one. Click on Add New and then click on Create Pattern. This will open the prediction pattern wizard. The first tab is for enumeration labels. Our subscription uses both enumeration and chronology captions. So we'll leave the box checked for use enumeration. And the first level will be volume. And I'll enter V dot and click on add level and then put in number and a period. Now I'm going to choose that my subscription restarts at unit completion. This means that the volume number will increase. Now I'm going to check the box for first level enumeration changes during the subscription year. And I'm going to choose that it changes at the start of the month and 
January. Once I've entered all of the enumeration caption information, I'll click on Next. Now I can enter my chronology captions. And here I have the checkbox for use chronology captions. And I'm going to choose level one as year. And I'm going to click on add level and choose month. This means that my uh, issuance caption will have volume, number, year, and month. Now I will click on next. And the next tab is the muff head indicator choose a compression display option. I still recommend can compress or expand. This means that the holding summary in the issues held area of the record summary can be uh, compressed or expanded. Next, choose a caption evaluation. I recommend captions verified, all levels present. And then click on next. Now we will look at the frequency and regularity information. Check the box for pre-selected, and then choose the frequency. For this subscription, we will choose monthly. Alternatively, you can check use number of issues per year and enter a number of issues. If the publication has known, combined, skipped, or special issues, they should be accounted for in the publication pattern. Check the box adjacent to use specific regularity information and then enter the um, specific information. For example, combined month 0708. That will give you a combined July-August issue. And then click on Next. Finally, you will be able to review your prediction pattern. Here you can see the raw pattern code. If you click on the blue arrows, it will expand to show you the raw code. This can be copied and saved for later. Here you'll see the pattern summary. Um, so the enumeration captions are volume and number. The chronology, chronology captions are year and month. Uh, it's frequency and monthly. And there is some specific regularity information. If you wanted to save this pattern, you can enter a name um, and choose to save with your library. Otherwise, just click on Save. If you wish to make changes to the pattern, you can click on Edit Pattern. Otherwise, click on Create. You can now predict new issues from this pattern. Click on Predict New Issues. The publication date um, will be for the first issue you expect to receive. Enter the enumeration labels for the first issue you expect to receive. I will enter volume 15, number 1. The chronology labels will come from the publication date, and then you can enter a prediction count. I would like to predict 12 issues, and then click on Save. This will take you to the Manage Issues tab, and you can see your 12 expected predicted issues. Issues can be received on the Manage Issues tab or through the Quick Receive option in the bibliographic record display. To receive issues from the Manage Issues tab, just make sure that barcode on Receive is checked and click on Receive Next. The Receive Items box will appear and then you can enter the uh, information. Make sure barcode items is checked and then you'll enter a call number. This box is a little squished uh, but you can scroll through it to see the whole field. Note that the copy location and the circulation modifier are pre-filled in. This is from the receive template. You can choose a different location if you wanted. Um, but using the default is recommended. And then just enter uh, the barcode for your serial and click on Save. The issue will be marked as received and a date received is recorded. You can also receive issues using the Quick Receive function. Just search for your title in the catalog or retrieve the record using the database ID. And from the record summary, you'll find the Serials button and just click on Quick Receive. Select your library and the subscription and click on OK. 
the Receive Items dialog box will open with the next expected issue. Make sure barcode items is checked. Edit the call number. And enter the barcode. And then click on Save. The issue will be marked as received and a date received will be recorded. The barcoded copy will now appear in the holdings area of the catalog and the holdings summary in the issues held tab will reflect the newly received issue. Thanks for watching this video and for more information please visit the BC Libraries Cooperative website.